you hear this claim made a lot, Republicans are the party of the rich, okay? Then that would mean for Republicans to win any election ever, it is in their best interest to keep all Americans, what? What? Rich. Mm, and if Democrats uh... only win the poor vote, it would be in their best interest to maintain what? 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 More poor Americans. Uh... Which party do you want looking out for your finances? <laughs> of the day. Do you see yourself better or worse off than when President Trump uh, took office? Financially, how do you see the state of the country? You know, right, right now, a lot of people are trying to make the case that the economy isn't doing as well as we all know it is. Right. Uh, did things seem it's easier, tough. more difficult under the Obama administration? What would it take to convince you that Donald Trump has been bad for the economy? I would really like to know. I don't know how they're going to spin this, the left right now, that the economy is not rip-roaring. So luck. let me, let me kind of, let's set some context here. Impeachment, okay, impeachment was a disaster to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. Right? For the Democrats, Trump is now headed into 2020. Uh, he's, he's been acquitted. Uh, he has America enjoying perhaps, the, I would argue, and you could argue against it, let me know, the strongest economy of all time. So, uh, you can see in this letter that circulated, uh, Democrats are now trying to convince people, figure out anyway, how to convince people that the economy isn't actually as good as the economy actually <laughs> is. So let's go through a few lies that they're going to be trying to sell. And I've, I've seen right. this a lot, so recently, uh, the New York Times claimed this, I think. Uh, oh, that's right, we have an overlay. Um, and Obama even tweeted out, suggesting oh. this idea that he can take credit for President Trump's job growth. Hmm. And that's of course, President difficult. Trump responded by huh. calling uh, Barack Obama's claims a con job. <laughs> Still the most entertaining <laughs> president ever. He very much yeah. so is, yes. And uh, he noted that President Obama had the slowest recovery from a recession since the Great Depression. Boom. So what's the yeah. truth here? Because I know some people aren't necessarily nerdy or wonkish, and you only really know what you feel. And polls show us that people feel as though the economy is better, but what do the numbers show us? Okay. Uh, the truth is that Obama's economy, uh, it, it did. It recovered from a recession. It we did. have to yes. acknowledge Agreed. that. So um, you could argue that President Trump is continuing that mm -hmm. because anything short of another recession would be a continuing continuation of technically Barack Obama taking us out of recession. So right. good for you, President Obama. There you go. There you go. Very nice. One on the scoreboard for you. But President Trump is right in that it's a con job. Uh, we'll get into a, <laughs> oh. a little bit more depth of that oh. later. It was short-lived. It was. President. It was very yeah. short-lived. It was short-lived. <laughs> the truth is it was one of the slowest recoveries ever in, in history. Yeah. While President Donald Trump has brought with him record-breaking booming economy by almost, and this is important, by almost every metric available. You'll see a lot of people on the left try mm -hmm. and say, well, GDP doesn't necessarily affect the average everyday American. When have you heard us argue GDP? Maybe in addendum to all of the numbers that of affect course, everybody yeah. individually, and of course GDP does matter, but no, it's every metric that we have available. Okay, here, pick a metric, any metric. Yes! That one. <laughs> so, if President Trump, he was, if he was just going to be continuing uh, the Obama trends, this is something that I always find odd. Now this is what they're claiming. If they all believe that, then mm -hmm. why did every single leftist economist, commentator, and their dog and pet ferret claim that the trends not only would cease, but that it would be impossible to continue them. Even more than that, yeah. I think it was, was it Krugman? It was a bunch of people. It's usually, yeah. it's always Krugman. It is. Why did they, cl they, would, they claim the, the market name. would crash? Do you remember when he claimed that Donald Trump couldn't create any new jobs, right. and he was asking if Donald Trump, well, here, just, just watch this clip. He's gonna bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you gonna do that? What are you gonna do? Cut taxes. There's, the, there's <laughs> no answer to it. He I just, just says, it. well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna negotiate a better deal. Well, how? What, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? I, I, what magic wand do you have? First off, it's a white magic wand. Oh, oh, Second, oh, uh, what you did, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something else that we've also, we've also heard this argument. You're going to see the Democrats try and spin it this way going into 2020. I want you to be equipped and know all these arguments. Yeah. Uh, they start with the premise, because it's undeniable, that uh, unemployment is at an all-time low. N not to mention the labor force participation rate, but even then they go, okay, unemployment is low, that looks bad for us. We can't <laughs> rejoice in a booming American <laughs> right. economy. Nope. We have to make an excuse. And so now you see a lot of those on the left saying, it doesn't matter because the jobs are, are just crap. It's the way it's, uh, it's jobs, 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 me, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. That's what it is. <laughs> no. And, 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 and until people Walmart start. Walmart greeters. <laughs> yeah, unless people start asking, hey, jobs, 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 best economy ever, uh, what are those wages? We're not going to get those answers because it's going to become a political campaign fodder yeah. against him. Hmm. Trust Disco Predator on this one, folks. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. And then after that, uh, when asked, are you sure that there's any evidence for that? He went. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Mm. You don't have a what? laser. <laughs> and he went like this. And we said, we can still see you, Disco Predator. <laughs> <laughs> that limb is not covered. So <laughs> let me ask you this. 
Is there any evidence that all of the jobs President Trump has added that they don't pay? We hear this at anything. Mm -mm. And this is like a lot of things, right? It's basically, it's a citation of a citation of a reference and no one really knows where it's coming from. So let me kind of get to the root, uh, the, the root of this, or at least from what I've seen, because I've tried to comb through this and it's really pretty paper thin, but I know that they're going to be pushing it again going into 2020. The Brookings Institute disappointed me sorely with this, but then you realize oh, you can boy. still have crazy people who work at uh, uh, you know, reputable institutes. They released a study. And the study was claiming that the low unemployment numbers, that there aren't anything to celebrate. Why? Because the jobs don't pay. Okay. They even went as far as to claim that a huge swath of hardworking Americans, I think like 53 million Americans, they make only $18,000 per year. You can go and I, and I highly encourage you to read this study and look at the methodology. Um, I know this might be hard for a lot of you to understand since the median household income for middle income families is up $5,000 under President Trump yeah. compared to only up $1,000 throughout the entirety of Barack Obama's mm -hmm. Eight mm -hmm. years. Here's why this is important to th this study, since this is what everyone is, is citing. As far as, if someone knows something else, this is the most legitimate study that I could find. Only half of the people in this analysis even work full time. Yeah. I think the actual number is like 50, 57%. That's right. Here's my question. Why include those people at all? Why include the part-time workers at all? That means that 43% could be working any amount of hours. There's no yeah. minimum set. So th this is a sampling, of, mind you, of only 53 million Americans, according to their methodology. But really, that's only about 30 million Americans when you take into account the people who are working full-time. Right. We have no yeah. idea as to what the average wage is for those full-time workers yeah. because of that average being pulled down by part-timers. How is this a valid analysis or in any way informative? And I want to be careful here because you see sometimes people who don't necessarily understand numbers or can't be bothered with research and they say, well, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Like, okay, we get it that you can quote Mark Twain. Good for you. <laughs> I think that was a Mark Twain Twain. I, I have no I idea. Have no I, idea. I probably say. got it wrong. <laughs> I don't know. But here's the thing. The, the, the spirit, if the, or if I should say, if the spirit, when you're conducting an economic study, right, if the spirit is to accurately assess the economic opportunity for the average full-time American worker, Right? If your goal is to find out how everyday Americans are actually doing, if you truly care about them, why would you include millions of kids working their yeah. way through college at 15 hours a week? It couldn't be less relevant. It absolutely, it's, it's clear as day that you're going into this with an agenda. By the way, speaking of agenda, hit the notification <laughs> bell, hit all notifications on YouTube. <laughs> but it's a good one. Because subscriptions don't mean anything. And uh, please do consider uh, joining Mug Club at ladderwithcrider.com slash Mug Club. You get access to a full daily show not available on YouTube. But we do have new clips. New uh, videos every single day yes. at 9 p.m. Eastern, so just uh, check in because subscriptions suck. The reason, if you look at the methodology of the study, is it removes the ability for someone to see the class mobility through the mm. statistics. Because yes. a kid who is in college who's working 15 hours is not going to be doing that for a long time. Correct. That's why yes. it's more important to look at the average income increase for Americans. The average job, the, the average hourly wage increase has been incredible, by the way. We've seen yeah. growth that we haven't seen before, and that's not even an accurate metric, but by the leftist metrics, it's doing better. <laughs> And here's something else, too, um, that they also claim while we're talking about this, that it doesn't really matter uh, if uh, we include part-time jobs or not, because now there are so many people who have to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Here you go. We look at these figures and we say, oh, unemployment is low. Everything is fine, right? Well, unemployment is low because everyone has two jobs. Uh, well, it's, it, you can just say that, but even PolitiFact rated right. the claim pants on fire. Yeah, and well, they really the didn't want to rate it yeah. pants on fire. That's the highest rating, I think. Isn't it odd that they're the fact wow. checker and they it use is. pants on fire? Pants yeah. on fire. Yeah. Like, what are they going to do, come out and immature. smash a watermelon with a mallet? Like, the economy is booming! <laughs> I don't trust you, PolitiFact. Um, <laughs> just doesn't seem legitimate. I know the not, irony, no. and yet you're talking about a guy who dresses up like a dame to make a joke. Um, it works. This is another point they're making. This, what they're trying to do is say this is relative, and yeah. uh, really Barack Obama was better at adding jobs than President Trump to the economy relatively. And, and you see them, mm -hmm. uh, Democrats, specifically touting uh, Barack Obama adding more jobs in a certain period than Donald Trump. This is the claim you'll hear. Uh, I'll show you some charts, and then we can go through some other things he said in his speech that were also quite incredible but let's start True. with job growth and he bragged a lot about the job growth but as you can see here what we're trying to show here is that job growth under president trump which has been significant was actually <laughs> lower than job growth under president obama <laughs> over the same 35 months uh the end of obama's term versus the beginning of trump's term so the idea that there's something unprecedented happening here is all is ridiculous take it from progeria rick moranis <laughs> <laughs> All the characters of this. Gosh. 
You can't be happy. These people can't be You happy. feel bad for laughing at that at home, but you shouldn't. Mm -mm. You shouldn't. <laughs> no. You feel good about yourself. It's a stupid comparison <laughs> for so many reasons, okay? So let, let me walk you through this a little bit. You can say that this is me opining, sure, but I want to present some empirical data. Uh, Obama's economy, right, he came in after the housing crash. Some of the highest unemployment on record it was nearing 10%, yeah. right? Or as they refer to it in Europe, good. <laughs> so, a lot of people don't realize, <laughs> you complain about gas, drive to Montreal for a day, S see what they're paying over there, exactly, imagine yeah. what they pay in Europe. When you talk about wanting to vilify the fossil fuel industries, fill up your tank in Sweden, then get back to me. <laughs> so, um, it's easy though to add jobs when you have massive unemployment and you're yeah. coming off of a recession. As a matter of fact, it's expected. Right? What we have yeah. under President Trump is, is really different. What you have right now is the lowest unemployment on record. And he's still adding huge amounts of jobs right now after we hit the yeah. record low unemployment. Of course, in taking it from 10% down to 7%, 6%, that would obviously yeah. be good, but you would expect it to go down from the abnormal. 10% is abnormal yeah. for Americans, so that's, uh, yeah. us have that kind of unemployment. But when you were down at 5% unemployment, and you're still adding record jobs, that matters. But the question the that's most relevant with Barack Obama is how did the economy recover? It turns out it was, it was Donald Trump is right, one of the slowest ever on record. Yeah. Slower than the average 4% growth that would be normal for the United States economy. Right, slower than George W. Bush's 2.7% economic yeah. growth, which people were not happy with, justifiably no. so. In fact, the GDP growth under Obama was the slowest ever that we have. Now, even CNN admits this, Jeez. I'm not uh, only talking about GDP, but I do think that it matters. Again, you can go back to look at all yeah. the numbers that affect you, your average income, the amount of layoffs, the labor force participation, what kind of economic opportunity there is out there, the cost of inflation. You can look at the cost of drugs that when you adjust for inflation have, yeah. have, have actually come down for the first time ever in my lifetime. These are things that affect you. GDP does matter on a global scale, but it's certainly not the only metric that we use. Pick a metric, find one that would show you that Donald Trump's, President Donald Trump's economy is not doing well. Here's what you need to know. We do have to go uh, in a second. These are, the, these are the fast facts that you need to know. Unemployment, all-time low. Layoffs, all-time low. Uh, again, not just focusing on, on GDP on the average American. There is more job opportunity in the last decade than there have ever been, and certainly at higher wages. The average middle-income American family, they've seen the biggest increase that they've seen in half a century, the exact yep. opposite of Barack Obama. During the first few years of Obama's presidency, the media preached his economy. They talked yep. about how well it was doing. Most Americans, you, this is where I want to hear from you, weren't feeling it. And you can look at that as, as to where Americans were investing, what they were buying, what their purchasing power was. Now, President Trump is doing well, and most Americans, when asked, are feeling it. Undeniably, repeatedly, Americans are saying that they are better off now than they were six years ago. But, and this is what you need to know the most, or at least what you need to keep your eyes peeled for, the media wants you to believe the exact opposite. Which begs, it begs the question, when the economy and the average American, when they're doing undeniably well in comparison to the last several decades, and Nancy Pelosi, Bernie Sanders, the DNC, and their media cronies are dead set on getting you to believe the opposite, who do you really think is looking out for you? Who wants you to be successful versus who wants to buy votes? I think that's important. Final thing I'll leave you with, if Democrats need the poor as a voting base and Republicans need the rich as a voting base, again, this is simplified logic, but you hear this claim made a lot, Republicans are the party of the rich, okay? Then that would mean for Republicans to win any election ever, it is in their best interest to keep all Americans, what? What? Rich. Oh, and if Democrats my. only win the poor vote, it would be in their best interest to maintain what? 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 More poor Americans. Oh. Which party do you want looking out for your finances? Guess who I am? I'm Josh Hartnett. Bet you didn't think you'd see that face in a while. <laughs> uh, this is what we call an end card, which is where I tell you that you should subscribe if you like this video or click one of these other videos that you may like. Uh, hit the notification bell, of course, join Mug Club because that's what allows us to continue doing these videos. And just so you know, YouTube actually has uh, created a new policy where they might start outright banning channels that are no longer commercially viable, which means that this is merely a figment of your imagination.